I just entered the grizzly bear cage. Things got scary real quick this morning. I'm trying to get to Stenton Peak. I know there's a route to it over there on uh, Cougar Creek. But that area has been closed for the longest time. They're doing some blasting in there. So come up with my own bushwhacky way to get to it. Looks about 15 kilometers one way. We're bushwhacking right along this morning. Hardly have to use the GPS. Just keep following the creek. We'll get there before you know it. Oh, what's the latest bushwhacking report? Not too bad, no mosquitoes. I left that original creek and I'm onto a new one. You gotta follow this for about two kilometers. Then the climbing shall commence. You guys watching on your big screens, may have noticed there's a decrease in video quality this time around. I knew it was going to happen. That's why I avoided buying an actual camera for so long. On that last hike, Otusquin Peak, I slipped on a loose rock and I smashed the screen right off my RX100. So it's going to be four to six weeks before that's fixed. So I'm back to the smartphone. I wish I would have packed in my microphone though. I didn't think of it at the time, but it works with my GoPro. So I could have made use of that today. Once I get up into the Alpine where it's windy, I'm gonna lose all the audio on this one. <laughs> I feel like such an amateur. Foresty forest, pulling around all these damaged goods. I've actually never destroyed a smartphone though. I've had really good luck with them. I've lost one though. Somewhere out there on the Mount Delphine Glacier. <laughs> My phone's down a crevasse there. I don't think anybody's found it. I don't think anyone ever will. That's the long lost foresty forest episode. I'm starting to wonder why someone came all the way out here with a chainsaw. I think I found the reason. Well, this is a rare find. I wonder if it was an official Banff National Park Ranger cabin at one time. There's no way that some random person just bushwhacked all these building materials in here. It would have to be a helicopter drop. But where's the roof and the walls? Were they just using a tarp or what? Signs of a stovepipe there. This must be the kitchen area. That is strange. Yeah, this is one of those lonely peaks that very few people are coming out to visit. Only a committed peak bagger would uh, risk their life coming into a bear cage like this. But I think I'm just about to lose my audio to the wind, so cue up that music, Forsty Forest. Well, there you go. That was a pretty good hike. And over in this direction, we got Mount Charles Stewart. It looks like it'd be reachable, but I'm not feeling that greedy today. That took eight and a half hours. I don't know if I'll have the energy to do that air fry tonight, but I will try my best. Monkey dance. Look here. 
I'm really tired. That was a 13 hour hike, but it's showtime. This monkey's got to dance. I'm going to try to make Mexican street corn tonight in the air fryer. Uh, so I'm going to mix all this stuff together in the bowl and paint it on the corn. But first, I'm going to cut this into four slices. Or five pieces. That also works. So now, olive oil, smoked paprika, chili powder, lemon pepper, garlic powder, and salt. Air Chris, 390, five minutes. So while that's going, I'm gonna mix together some mayo, lime, and a chipotle pepper. Slice this up. I think these need another five minutes. Let's just pretend like this is cotilla cheese. Mm. That is super tasty. I've never had corn like this before. Wow, yeah, that's really good. I probably looked like David Hasselhoff when he was trying to eat that hamburger. This is a little sloppy, but amazingly good. All right, I'm gonna finish my steak, then uh, I gotta go find a place to sleep for the night. So I'll see you guys later. You guys may remember many videos ago, I talked about receiving a game-changing van life item, but it turned out at that time it wasn't quite ready. It needed some more tweaking. So we decided to give James some more time to uh, make improvements, but I've officially received version two and I've got the go ahead to show it off. Um, but I gotta be really clear with you guys, I'm not actually gonna be able to run it or test it out. Uh, because the cold temperature is a big influence on how this thing performs. So we're going to have to wait until uh, next winter for an official review. But good news, it turns out that the summer only lasts about two and a half weeks here. So the review will be up before you know it. So this is a completely silent diesel heater fuel pump that James invented in his home shop. He uses a micro diaphragm pump that he's upgraded with fuel rated components. And it's got a knob on here so that you can adjust the dosage rate for your own specific burner and the conditions you're in. It requires uh, an independent power source as well as the two original green wires to be hooked up. With the original pump that I received, I installed it underneath my fuel tank next to the door. And when I started out at 5 degrees Celsius, it was working great. I was loving it. But as the night set in and the temperature dropped down to minus 10, uh, it just stopped working and I couldn't get the dosage properly adjusted so I had to switch back to the clicker but forget all that that uh, doesn't matter anymore that was just part of the development process uh, he's completely overhauled the inner workings and uh, he's confident that the bugs are worked out at this point he's tested it on his own down to minus 20 celsius and I hope that eventually he'll come up with a website or something so that we can all take a look at uh, the best possible installation one thing that he mentioned, he said it's better to have this above your fuel tank so that gravity isn't pushing fuel through your lines. I don't think my setup is going to be the most ideal for this, but it is what it is. I can't really change it around too much at this point. I'm going to install this uh, next to my burner so that it's receiving some of the ambient heat off there. But one question that I have is uh, if I'm away all day long and the temperature settles to minus 20 in here, what happens uh, when it reaches positive 20? Will I have to continuously adjust the dosage or will there be one setting to rule them all? We'll just have to wait to find out. But let's take a look inside and uh, see what it's all about. I wish I could explain everything that I was looking at, but more complicated than a clicker pump, that's for sure. 
Well, that's about all for now. I'm not actually going to install it. I still need to order a bigger 15 liter fuel tank and I'm just going to leave my original fuel line and fuel pump intact in case I ever need to switch back to that. But uh, I'll put his email address in the video description or I'll uh, pin a top comment if you want to get a hold of him. He also did a video interview here on YouTube with Socks with Sandals if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, he's just a one-man operation. So once the orders are in, he may be back ordered for a while. Uh, I want him to do well and sell millions of these things. Uh, it's amazing that he came up with this all on his own. Um, but at the same time, i got to be careful what I say because uh, I can't review it until next winter. So we'll just have to wait and see. It's starting to get really hot in here. I wanted to do some uh, construction on my kitchen area today. i got to go find a place to park so I can do some cutting. Uh, but I'm going to save that for the next video. So uh, thanks for watching and thank you to Patreon supporters and I'll see you soon.